very good morning i'll be talking about a simple topic normal menstruation which you think you already know a lot about but after this 15 minute talk you will know that there were many things to normal menstruation that you were not told before now i have divided the cycle uh, a normal menstrual cycle at three different levels pituitary ovary and the uterus now let us start with what happens on day 0 the stimulus for each cycle comes from fsh all right fsh begins to rise first thing in the cycle now what are the functions of this fsh a few things you must already be knowing it causes as its name it is a follicle stimulating hormone so it stimulates your follicle this is the primordial follicle to preantral to the antral and finally to the graafian follicle this is brought about by fsh second thing is it causes release of estrogen these granulosa cells are going to form estrogen from androgens in the presence of fsh fsh activates an enzyme called aromatase which converts androgens to estrogen now first function you know second function is to increase estrogen production now let us see the functions of fsh in detail first is follicle stimulation as we already we have seen then increase in activity of aromatase which will increase in estrogen finally with estrogen it increases its own receptors on granulosa cells theek hai the other thing is by the end of follicular phase in late follicular phase it increases lh receptors on the granulosa cells also in fact it induces these lh receptors on the granulosa cells all right then it causes release of inhibin b inhibins are of two forms b and a remember b comes before b is secreted by granulosa cells and a is secreted by the corpus luteum all right now as fsh increases estrogen is going to increase all right also inhibin if we draw inhibin it is going to increase like this now because of this increase there is a small fall because estrogen and inhibin both give negative feedback to the pituitary to decrease gonadotropin so there is a small fall now let us see one of the functions of estrogen estrogen at the level of endometrium will cause proliferation of endometrium endometrium goes into proliferative phase then synergistically with, with fsh it increases fsh receptors on granulosa cells theek hai and it also causes granulosa cell proliferation with fsh at the level of pituitary it has negative feedback effect on gonadotropins so it will decrease fsh secretion this is at lower levels of estrogen at very high levels of estrogen it has a positive feedback on lh release now see what happens with this positive feedback estrogen goes on increasing now lh which was dormant by now starts increasing because of this estrogen surge there is an lh surge so what is responsible for a lh surge if they ask it is the estrogen surge the rise in estrogen causes lh surge this lh surge now let us see what are the functions of lh but uh, wait a second before we talk about the functions of lh let me tell you about a small thing called two cell two gonadotropin theory this is operative only in the early follicular phase in early follicular phase what happens here what i have i'll show you a bigger picture this is the theca cell and the granulosa cell if you look at the picture of antrum that i antral follicle that i have drawn here is your oocyte primordial follicle of the primordial follicle the same oocyte these are the granulosa cells that have proliferated in presence of fsh and these are the theca cells that have organized from the adjoining stroma initially it was not there in the follicle now they say in the early part of follicular phase the theca cells have lh receptors and granulosa cells have fsh receptors that's why the name two cell two gonadotropin theory all right theca cells have the ability to convert cholesterol to androgens because they have lh acting on them only lh can do this conversion can stimulate the enzyme which does this conversion the rate limiting step of this conversion and then this androgen through gap junctions travels to granulosa cells where fsh will stimulate aromatase and will cause conversion of androgen to estrogen so in the earlier part you require a baseline activity of lh and increased activity of fsh to finally produce estrogen from androgens so in a cycle if fsh is not there lh will help only in production of androgens and a little bit of progesterone if luteinization has taken place that too will not happen if ovulation doesn't take place so this is operative only in early follicular phase because as we already saw that fsh 
see forgive me if i am going too fast because this is supposed to end in 15 minutes so as we have seen the fourth function of fsh was to increase in lh receptors on granulosa cells in late follicular phase so this two cell gonadotropin theory which was active in the early follicular phase changes in the late follicular phase right because now this granulosa cells will also have lh receptors and it will itself produce not this granulosa cell is not called a granulosa cell then it is a luteinized follicle where all theca and granulosa cells will produce everything all right so let's come back to the cycle which we were talking about here occurs the lh surge it okay if lh surges come here day 14 will be somewhere here sorry for the wrong graph in fact sorry for going at a wrong pace all right so day 14 ovulation takes place now what triggers the ovulation let us see the functions of lh LH causes resumption of meiosis. Now, do you know that the oocyte in this primordial follicle is arrested in prophase of meiosis 1? The diplotene stage of prophase of meiosis 1. Alright. So, this has to extrude its first polar body at the time of ovulation. That meiosis resumption, meiosis 1, prophase to metaphase will go only if LH is there. So it causes resumption of meiosis. Secondly, it causes release of prostaglandins matrix metalloproteases by the cells in the follicles, the granulose and the theca cells. These are lytic cytokines which will cause lysis of this wall. Alright, this wall lysis, there will be ovulation. Okay. So this finally brings about complete ovulation and extrusion of first polar body. And then it causes luteinization of follicle. Luteinization is the follicle becomes large, shaggy. The cells have large cholesterol fatty vacuoles inside. And they can produce all types of hormones now. The hormones that I'm talking about here are estrogens, progesterone, inhibin A and also androgens. Now because baseline activity of FSH is still continuing, before it comes back to normal. Some amount of estrogen is also produced in the luteal phase. Alright. So let us see what happens in our cycle. This is your FSH. Okay. This is how FSH is going. This is your LH. A surge because of estrogen. And then coming back to a little above the baseline. Then this was your estrogen which peaked here. At the time of ovulation everything will peak. Then starts coming back to baseline. But because of this rise in LH, there will again be another peak of estrogen. And the first peak of progesterone will be here. Okay. Now what brings about the decline? This decline is brought about by the degeneration of corpus luteum. Corpus luteum has a life of 9 to 11 days. The peak function is at 8 to 9 days. After which it starts to degenerate. So once it has degenerated, the source of all these things has come down. Inhibin has come down. Estrogen has come down. Progesterone has come down. All these three gave negative feedback to the pituitary to decrease gonadotropins. When these three come down, again, the FSH which has reached at, at its baseline on day 28 starts to rise in another cycle, begins. So did you get that? Now there is one more important thing that is left in the cycle that I want to talk about. It is selection of dominant follicle. What are the mechanisms that cause selection of dominant follicle? One of the things we saw was estrogen and inhibin. They give negative feedback to FSH. That is one thing. So FSH falls. What happens when FSH falls is that in a particular cycle, you have a cohort of say 7 to 8 follicles being recruited to be stimulated by FSH. Before this, when they were all small primordial follicles, they were independent of the effect of FSH. Before any follicle is recruited or is suitable capable of being recruited in a cycle, it has to undergo a growth of 70 days. This growth is independent of FSH. 
all right so initially the primordial follicle this which we saw does not have any fsh receptors fsh does not act on this stage it is only in this and this stage where fsh is going to act so your follicle has to grow up for 70 days to be able to recruit it in the cycle to be able to have fsh receptors after these eight in each ovary eight to ten in each ovary have fsh receptors all of them are going to grow at their own pace by say day four or five you will have one large follicle and other not so large follicles this largest follicle has an advantage of having the maximum number of granulosa cells and the maximum number of fsh receptors now because it has the maximum number of fsh receptors it has the maximum amount of estrogen both of these are going to act synergistically so this has an advantage when there's a dip at the time of crisis when there is a dip the others might not sustain the dip while the largest one will that is one mechanism the other is they say amh is produced in smaller follicles these primordial follicles the smaller preantral follicles these follicles and these follicles will have amh amh has a negative effect on granulosa cells So this inhibits the growth of granulosa cells. The smaller cells, one, they are not being acted upon by enough amount of FSH. Second, they have more amount of AMH. AMH is acting in these smaller cells. The larger ones have got rid of their AMH. So this is another mechanism for monofollicular development. So the main things are estrogen inhibin and the AMH, which play a role in selection of dominant follicle, monofollicular growth, as I said. Now what is important here is, First 70 days as I said are independent of FSH. After that from day 0 to day 14 that is 15 days. It will take 15 days to ovulate on an average. So total time taken for a follicle to grow and ovulate is 85 days. Out of which first 70 days are FSH independent. Alright. Now after this I want you to see an MCQ depicting this. 